welcome to the Old Time Radio Hour. I'm your host, Justine Ward, and each week we bring you a classic show from radio's golden age. This week we have an adaptation of the 1940 movie, Till We Meet Again. It was a remake of the 1932 classic, One Way Passage. Merle Oberon and George Brent star as unlikely lovers in this Lux Radio Theater production produced by Cecil B. DeMille. Lux Radio Theater, Till We Meet Again, first broadcast June 10th, 1940 on CBS. Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien in Till We Meet Again. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Ever since man learned to navigate the seas, a ship and a voyage have meant romance. And that's just as true in these days of luxury liners as it was when Columbus sailed from Lisbon. A ship in mid-ocean is still a world apart. Each passenger a different story, each on a different errand. And on that ship, anything can happen. That's the background for tonight's play, Till We Meet Again. And it's a perfect setting for what does happen. Till We Meet Again is the drama of a man and a woman in love. On a voyage that ends in a strange harbor. Two travelers from different worlds with different ideals, but with the same destiny. And into the short weeks that separate Hong Kong from San Francisco, they crowd a lifetime of adventure and happiness and mystery. After seeing the picture, we knew there were three stars you'd demand for our radio production of Till We Meet Again, the same three who starred on the screen. So our next move was to get this trio together at the place where a good many Hollywood deals are negotiated, a luncheon table at the Brown Derby. Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien walked eagerly into the trap, and Pat went even further. He paid the check. It's a cast we're proud of, brought to you by a product we're proud of. Lux Flakes. And women who run their homes the modern way know that Lux Flakes on the shelf is the trademark of a wise homemaker. Now the steward has provided a comfortable deck chair for each of you. The gangplank is up, and our curtain rises on the first act of Till We Meet Again, starring Merle Oberon as Joan Ames, George Brent as Dan Hardesty, and Pat O'Brien as Steve Burke, with Mae Clark as the Countess. harbor of Hong Kong, crossroads of the east, haven of ships from every corner of the world. Here at anchor rides the American steamship Maloa, her funnels gleaming red in the setting sun, harbor craft scurrying madly about her graceful bow. For within the hour, the Maloa sails for San Francisco and home. In a luxurious cabin on the main deck, a girl lies quietly on the sofa. The ship's doctor in a chair beside her a maid hovering anxiously in the background. The girl is pale, but composed. Silly of me, wasn't it, Doctor? Keeling over like that in the middle of my own farewell party? <laughs> I can imagine what my friends are saying. Joan's passed out. Poor Joan. Well, Doctor, how am I doing? I'd like to listen to your heart, please. Of course. Louise! Yes, Miss Joan? Where did everyone go? Why, they went back on shore, Miss Joan. All of them? I took the liberty of sending them away. Will you fix Miss Ames' bed, please? She's going to rest. Yes, Doctor. And if you could help her undress, we'll avoid exertion. No. Louise, will you leave us and lay out my green dress? I'm going ashore for a while. But, Miss Jones... Please. Yes, Miss. You don't obey a doctor's orders? I used to, but not anymore. Why should I? Miss Ames, have you had the seriousness of your case explained to you? More than that, Doctor. I've read all about it. Oh, when I was in the sanitarium, I had nothing else to do. So I became an authority on heart cases. I see. You know, then, that absolute rest and care are indicated. Apparently, all these doctors have told you the same thing. They did. But you see, they knew and I knew that the thing was hopeless. And I couldn't go on just lying down, waiting for it to come. So I've been waltzing around the world, keeping my little secret to myself. You see, doctor, there's nothing more devastating than kind, pitying people when one's in a predicament like this. 
I do know now that when it does come, I'll be going somewhere. Well, there is something in that, of course. But if you were my little girl, you'd be in bed. <laughs> You're very charming, Doctor. You know, it's a strong thing to say to someone who's young and... Well, to anyone for that matter. But you do understand that with exertion and excitement, uh, it can happen almost any time. You mean keel over for good? Yes, Doctor. I understand that. May I send for you if I don't feel very well? Oh, of course. You going on to San Francisco? Yes, and then to New York, and then round the little old world again. You see, Doctor, I love ships and people and sky and rain. And shall we say the elements? <laughs> Not bad psychology in my case, is it, Doctor? I see what you mean. That's why you're going ashore now, to join your friends. All part of the scheme, to be with people, never to be alone. I've an hour yet before the boat sails. I mustn't waste it. Of course not. You'll let me know if there's anything I can do? Thank you, Doctor. You're very kind. You see, Mike, there are two schools of thought in mixing a drink like this. The lime juice school and the lemon juice school. I'm a lemon juice man myself. You don't say, sir. Emphatically. That's why I always mix it myself. I've been a bartender for 20 years, but I've never seen this one. Has it got a name? Yes. It's a paradise cocktail. When anyone comes along who knows that every second of life is important, make him one of these. I know every second of life is important. Oh, good evening. I've been watching you mix that. Rather difficult, isn't it? Will you share in the fruits of labor? Another glass, Mike. Yes, sir. There you are. A few drops of paradise. Think of that. And looking at you, quite appropriate. <laughs> My name's Dan. Mine's Joan. Hello, Joan. Hello, Dan. Shall we drink to our brief meeting? Yes. Hail and farewell. Oh, no, that sounds a little too ruthless. Auf Wiedersehen. All right. Auf Wiedersehen. You always break glasses when you finish with them. It's an old superstition. It seals a promise. <laughs> you must be a nuisance around the house. <laughs> I don't make many promises. Well, not to be outdone. And now we're bound to meet again. Goodbye. Wait. I, I'm just looking for some friends. Would you like to help me find them? Do you think I should? Luck has allowed us a few drops of paradise. And, and the others might spoil it? Yes. You're right. We'll trust luck to come around again sometime. It must. Goodbye, Joan. Goodbye, Dan. Joan, dear. Oh, here you are. We've been waiting for you. Hello. Who was that man, darling? What? Oh, oh an old friend of mine. All right, Dan. I wouldn't move if I were you. I've got a gun right in your ribs. Well, hello, Steve. It's been a long chase, fella. Looked as though I might make a career out of it. Well, you can put that rod away. I'll put you away first. Hold out your hand. I've got a bracelet for it. Want me to roll up my sleeve for you? All right, sucker, you asked for it. All right, Danny boy. Will you come peaceful like her? Will you be having some more? Okay, Steve. You win. Put your hand on that bracelet. You make another move and I'll blow you in half. Oh, don't be such a copper. My, we got rough, didn't we? Well, where do we go now? To the boat. And then San Quentin. Mind if I get my clothes? They're on board. Oh, very considerate of you. Yes, wasn't it? All right, this way. You know, you're a hard man to lose, Steve. Yeah, so they say. The chief told me when I left San Francisco... Don't come back without Dan Hardesty. Well, here I am. And here I am. You know, they're making these handcuffs better looking these days. That last pair. They looked awful. You know, I was ashamed to be seen in them. Well, I'm glad you like these. You're going to be wearing them a long time. Yeah. What boat are we taking? The Maloa. Is that all right with you? I don't mind. We've got a few minutes yet. Mind if we stay out here on deck? No, oh, help yourself. Thanks. You know, Steve, you ought to be very grateful to me. How many cops get a chance for a trip around the world? Marseille, Algiers, Cairo? Yeah, your trail wasn't half bad. Yeah? Well, the last leg now. Honolulu, and then San Francisco. Yeah, and you're going all the way. Sure, why not? Everything's free, good company, swimming pool. Oh, do you swim, Steve? What's the difference? Ever play water polo? Nope. But I play a swell game of tag. I used to be sensational at water polo. 
Must teach her sometime. Oh, yeah? You know, you jumped off a train once, but most of this ocean's a long way out. Steve, do we have to do the Siamese twin act all the way? I don't know. We'll see. Say, any chance you lost the key in that battle back there? You can relax. I got it right in my pocket. Now don't stand too near that rail, please. What's the matter, sailor? Now, we haven't put the pins in yet, sir. If you lean on that rail, you'll have to go clean over. Oh, thanks. What are you looking at, Dan? Huh? Oh, just looking down. Be a long drop, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, kind of gives you the shivers. Oh, why don't you get back a little? Look. Look down, Steve. Come on, get away from that rail. Hang on! Watch it! Hey! Sorry, Steve. This is where we part company. Where's that key? Wait. So long, Steve. Dan, I can't swim. I can't swim. You poor. All right. Hang on to me. Hang on and keep your head up. Keep it up. Grab them there. Grab them. I've got them, sir. Give me a hand here. All right, up they go. There we are. You all right? Me? Sure. You all right, sir? (laughs) Yeah. I'm okay. McDonald. Yes, sir? See that these two gentlemen get to their stateroom. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this way, sir. I'd better say goodbye, Joan. Take good care of yourself, dear. I will. There seems to be some excitement over there. Then stay away from it. Remember, Joan, the faster the trip, the shorter. I know. Goodbye, Mrs. Hester. Oh, Bonnie. Goodbye, dear. Oh, Joan, do you know Mrs. Coburn? Joan Ames. How do you do? How do you do? This is my husband, Jimmy. Hello. Hello. Oh, I've got to run. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Oh, did you get off all right, Mrs. Hester? Are you sailing alone, Miss Ames? Yes, just the maid. Call me Joan. <laughs> all right, Joan. Call me Bonnie. <laughs> you look it. Thanks. You're on your honeymoon, aren't you? <laughs> is it that evident? <laughs> you look happy. Here we go. Happy voyage, Joan. Happy voyage, Bonnie. Yeah. <clears throat> you must be nuts. I'd like to prove that I'm really nuts to the governor. You see, he might make it life. I don't feel like letting them take mine just now. Dan, why did you have to slip me that life belt? I didn't have to. Why didn't you let me drown, Dan? I was just wondering. I'd have been out of your way, and with your knack of disappearing, you'd have had a real break. Uh, I guess you are nuts. There's a difference between stepping on a dirty rat and rubbing out a... Oh, well, forget it. Rubbing out what? What were we going to say? I think you'd be all right if if you weren't a cop. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for the life belt. Okay. Now, what about those handcuffs? Can we leave them off for the trip? There isn't a chance of my getting away. We're three miles out right now. Well, I'll tell you, Dan. Just because of that life belt, you're not going to the brig where you ought to go. I'm going to give you a break. But one move and you get it. You understand? Okay, Steve. Thanks. All right. Well, 14 days to Frisco. A lot of sea out there, isn't it, Dan? Couldn't be too much for me. Oh, forget it. Go on, get yourself a drink. Thanks, I think I will. Want one? No, no thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that guy giving you the eye? Who? Where? Inside there at the bar. Oh, I don't know. I never saw him before. Now, listen. I can spot a con when I'm asleep. And that guy's it. Is he? I'm sorry I can't help you make a pinch. Now, look, Dan. I won't make it any tougher than I have to for you if you don't start playing hide-and-seek with me. I want you to stay around where I can see you, and if you find yourself straying, just tip me off where you're going to stray to. Do that for me, will you? Yeah, sure. So long. Oh. dice, no? That's right. Your roll, Countess. Such a strange game. Six dice. I never had a... Oh. I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to bump you like that. It's rather crowded in here. Yes. Have we not met before, monsieur? No, I... No, I don't believe so, madame. No. Perhaps I make the mistake. Excuse me, please. Is it still my roll, sir, Errol? Easy, sir. Uh, what'll it be? A paradise, and I'll mix it myself. Yes, sir. Hello, Dan. Hello, Rocky. Where did you spring from? I ain't sprung yet. Well, you look okay, Dan. Not for long. Are you alone? 
I'm the cat that walks, just me and myself. I'll need you. Hey, look, I got 15 bucks, Danny. The ticket cleaned me. Now, listen. I'm on my way back to San Quentin with Steve Burke. He's outside there watching us now. What's the rap? Murder. <laughs> Murder? Be careful. What's it mean, Dan? Life? For a couple of weeks, I'd say, and then, well, you know. How can you beat it? It's the Sharks or Honolulu. Well, I'd say Honolulu. Don't know me too well in front of Burke. Now, listen. The French woman behind me with the English mug is a very old friend of mine. Catch her presently away from that mug and tell her what I've told you. And not to know me. Get it? Okay, sure. Now, beat it. I'll see you later. Right. Here's the making, sir. Thanks. John? John? What are you staring at? Bonnie. That man over there? Is he someone you know? He didn't say he was sailing, but he did sail, didn't he? Who is he, Joan? He's... he's Dan. He must have decided rather suddenly. Bonnie, do you mind... Oh, don't bother about me. If he's that important, go and speak to him. Hello, Dan. Why, it's... hello, Joan. The luck's come back, hasn't it? This time in full measure. Paradise cocktail? Please. We can't spare a drop. No, it's much too precious. To this important second. <laughs> <laughs> Look out there. Sunset. Yes, it's beautiful. Shall we go out on deck? I'd love to. Hello, Dan. Oh, you two haven't met, have you? Miss Ames, may I present Mr. Burke? How do you do, Mr. Burke? How do you do? I'm glad to know you. Steve's an old friend of mine. We're uh, sort of traveling together. How nice. Yes, we're together all the time. Practically inseparable. May I borrow him once in a while, Mr. Burke? Sure, as long as you see you don't lose him. <laughs> no, I won't lose him. Well, see you around, Dan. The day knows how to go out, doesn't it, Dan? What does the setting sun make you think of? The Angelus. <laughs> it's a silly game, but will you play it with me? Anything. What is it? It's a game where I can find out all about you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what do we do? Well, I say words or phrases, and you say whatever comes into your mind. Very well. Go ahead. Bubbling water. Uh, laughter. And laughter. The crinkles around your eyes. <laughs> Life. Death. Good. Green grass. Uh, bare feet. White clouds. Freedom. Excitement. Smiling eyes. Friendship. Uh, a hand clasp. Cabbages. Kings. Adventure. Pirates. Will o' the wisp. Quickly, quickly. Uh, a sadness. A long search. And love. The end of the search. Know all about me now? Yes, Dan. Yes. Who is it? Bonjour, Countess. Who are you? What do you wish? Rocky's the name. Rocky Rockingham. I'm a friend of Dan Hardesty. Is that enough? Yes. What's the matter with Dan? Is he too up in the world to say hello to old friends? He's not up. He's way down. And I got to slip it to you pronto. He wants you to help him. Go ahead. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about this English guy you're hanging around with? That's mine. I've been building that up for months. Can you get some dough? Well, I'm trying. If the dice fall right. Is that what Dan's after? I guess he could use it. What's his angle? The girl? No. The cop. You mean the one tonight upstairs? The one from Frisco? Yeah, Steve Burke. What's he doing socially with cops? It ain't so social. Burke's taking him back to San Quentin. San Quentin? It happens to the best of but us. But not to Dan. Is it... Is it a long stretch? How well do you know Dan? I've known him since I was a kid. I used to think, once in a while, that maybe Dan and I could... Well, I didn't have quite what it took, I guess. Not quite the luck. You're in love with him, huh? What do you think? Well, that makes it tougher for me to tell you what I got to... Can you take it? Sure, I can take anything. Didn't you know that Dan was in for murder? Murder? When? That's what they called it. He rubbed out a dirty double cross in the heel. Self-defense, too, but he couldn't prove it. Murder? You don't forget a rap like that. That means life. Yeah, worse than that, it means his life. He hasn't a chance. He's been sentenced. He'd have been dead by now, but he broke away while they were taking him to San Oh, Quentin. you're crazy. He'll tell you himself. His only chance is Honolulu, and he thinks you can help him. How? Well, he's got some idea or something. Well, get him here now. Hey, he doesn't get out of Burke's sight. Well, try. I'll stay up. If you can't get him, come back anyway. We'll arrange something for the morning. Top deck. No further to climb. 
I can climb forever if you just hold my hand. Yes, Joan. All my life I've been reaching out for your hand. Where are we? I haven't known since Hong Kong, since I was wrecked on the bar. On a ship in the Pacific. A very small ship. Ten days to Honolulu, five more to the Golden Gate. Ten days, the Golden Gate. But what is time? Days, hours, years. Eternity can happen in a minute. Haven't you found that out? I will. Will you teach me all the important things you seem to know? How did you find them out? Watching the stars on nights like this. They're like us. Tiny specks lost for all time in their own unending oceans. And they say that if you make a wish on a star, it's sure to come true. I wish, I wish... What do you wish? To tell would spoil it. Yes, it would. Will you be satisfied? Us, here, just us. No questions asked. No questions at all, except the ones your eyes ask and my eyes answer. Nothing said. Except what my heart says and your heart understands. Listen. Can you hear it? Dan, 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 Dan. Let me say it. Let me just whisper it. Joan. The curtain falls on the first act of Till We Meet Again, starring Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien. During this brief intermission before Mr. DeMille brings us Act Two, let's have a little music. You know, there are three things women like about new Quick Lux flicks. And I've asked Lou Silvers to say these three things to us in music. First, that says speed. New Quick Lux is fast. The next thing, that music says a little goes so far. Just a few flakes make so many suds. And finally... That says purity. New Quick Lux is so pure. Now, if you will remember these three things, you'll always get New Quick Lux flakes for washing the things you want to keep lovely. Because it cleanses so swiftly and surely. Because it's thrifty to use. And because it's so pure. We think New Quick Lux is just about tops for your nice things for all your washables. And a lot of women think so, too. Their enthusiasm has made Lux Flakes the most popular care for fine fabrics in this country. Now, that's a pretty fine vote of confidence, isn't it? Next time you order, get a big box of New Quick Lux. It comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more, and you'll find it's so fast. A little... Goes so far. And it's so pure. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Till We Meet Again. Starring Merle Oberon as Joan, George Brent as Dan, and Pat O'Brien as Steve, with May Clark as the Countess. <laughs> Steamship Maloa moves slowly eastward toward San Francisco. But Dan Hardesty and Joan Ames are bound for another port, eternity. They know nothing of each other's destiny and are happy with a stolen holiday which fate has allowed them. It's late evening, four days out of Hong Kong. To the cabin of the woman known as the Countess comes Dan Hardesty. The door is opened for him and he slips quickly into the room. Dan. Oh, Dan. Hello, Countess. Oh, don't look like that. They haven't banged those gates behind me yet. They can't. Shh. We've got to whisper. You looked lovely tonight. Ravishing. Dan, what's going to happen to you? You've got to get away. I've got one chance. Honolulu. We'll be there for one whole day from nine till about dusk. Now, I've got to give Burke the slip and believe me, he's no dummy. He's been on my trail for over a year, all over the globe. Paris. Oh, I wish I'd known. I was in Paris. Well, about this Burke... He's taking no chances at all. I could move in on him. Burke? Oh, he's no ladies' man. But I know you when you want to. If you could just find out what he intends to do with me that one day in port. He's being pretty decent right now. Letting you loose? Yes, he's got something of a heart. So have you. I've seen you with that girl. Well, I can't tell you anything except don't know me at all. Keep clear. Just get to know Burke. Now need some money. How do we go for that? I've got a branch of the Bank of England on board. Sir Harold. 
All right. One other thing, and write this down. Herb McGillis. Yes. Send them a radio. 221 Front Street, Honolulu. I'll need a quick way off the island, any kind of a tramp. Anything that could be rented to leave as soon as I can make it. Don't mention my name on the radio. Dan, you've got to make it. Well, just in case I don't. You know I'm grateful to you, don't you? Dan. You're a great girl. I've always said so. Good night. Good night, Dan. Once. You must not bother the gentleman. Down, down, Albert. Oh, that's all right. Oh, Albert, stop. Monsieur, I am so sorry. Oh, don't mention it. Come here, Pooch. Hiya, fella. <laughs> Seems to like you, monsieur. But then you look like the kind of a man who would love dogs. And dogs would love, n'est-ce pas? Well, I got a little dog at home. A bull? No, one in the family's enough. Then you have two. No, only one, a spaniel. Ah, a one-man dog. A wife, a spaniel, a pipe, a fire. Good American, no? Huh? You got everything right except the wife. No, monsieur, that I cannot believe. But I am too curious. I shall know all about you before we have met. I am. My name is Countess de Bresac. Mine's Burke, Steve Burke. How do you do? How are you? Perhaps, monsieur Burke, he would walk with us? With me and Albert? Sure, I'd like to. Come along, then. Come, Albert. You, uh, object to my pipe? Do I look like someone who would object? Well, you never can be sure. <laughs> you know, monsieur, Albert is acting very strange. Usually he has no use for the men. Albert likes the ladies. Oh, is that so? Well, looking at you, Carlos, you can't blame him for that. <laughs> oh, monsieur, you are too droll. Then, uh, uh, what do they call you at home? Burke, just Burke. Just Burke? But goes on, Carlos. You sizing me up? What does this mean, sizing up? You know, that, that look, it kind of goes through you. You mean like the look you just gave to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a habit in my line. I, I mean, when uh, when strangers meet, they, uh, you, you know, I guess everybody does it. <laughs> and what do you find is my size, Berg? I don't know. You think I am pretty? A little? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Oh. Well, I don't think you're as pretty as you're uh, to regular, you know? You seem like a regular guy to me, if, if, if you know what I mean. You, do you know what I mean, Countess? <laughs> I think so. And at home, they call me Tina. Okay, Tina. You see, that's what I'm talking about. My darling Joan, this letter is the hardest I've ever had to write. How can I ever tell you? Hello, Dan. Oh, oh hello, Joan. I... I was just writing a letter. To me? No, it's um, just a sort of a business thing I had to do. Oh, so you couldn't write me a tiny note, but you could write a dull business letter. I tried to write yours and couldn't. Look, you see all these? I, I began it 20 times. Why did you write so many mad-looking Jones on this one? What else could I write? Just Joan, Joan, Joan. There's nothing else. You're right. There's nothing else except... Except what? I'll whisper it, Dan. Let me whisper. The stars are out again. Just for us. A perfect night. And tomorrow, a perfect day. Honolulu. You've been there, Dan? Once. Just calling. There's a spell to the islands. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you high up to the mountains, where you can look down and see the ocean on both sides. The colors keep changing. And then suddenly, a cloud will roll right over like a blanket. It makes you feel as though you'd left the earth and were riding away on a cloud. Then it clears, and you can see the colors again. And sometimes you can hear music. No one knows where it comes from. What are you thinking about? You. I love you, Joan. Oh, Dan. <gasps> Dan. Oh, Joan, what is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Wait. Wait here. I'll be back in a moment. Just a moment. Not yet. Oh, please. Please, God. Not now. Not now. Miss Ames, is that you? Yes. Good evening, Doctor. Anything wrong? Well, I just... I think it's all right now. I do wish you'd go to bed and rest, Miss Ames. Not now, no. Well, of course, I can't order you to bed, but you're actually pounding your life away. 
A girl who's as ill as you shouldn't keep up this pace. You know that, don't you? Yes, Doctor, I do, but but not now, really. Please. All right. Good night, Miss Ames. Joan? Joan, why did you run away like that? Have you been crying? Yes. But why? Why were you crying? I don't know. It was all a little too much. I've never been so happy in my life. It was the music and you and, well, all just too good for me, that's all. Hail and farewell, remember? Not farewell, no. Joan, whatever happens at any time, you will remember, won't you? Remember? Remember what? Oh, that I'm grateful. I mean, beautiful moments are given to some people only to be snatched away again. But you can't snatch moments when they've been given to you. I couldn't lose you, ever. You know that, Dan? Yes, I do. But everything you say has a faint sort of goodbye underneath it. Why? Why, Dan? Well, you've made the present so perfect. And any future is uncertain, isn't it? Not ours. Dan, tell me, do you belong to me? Do you really belong to me? That's all I want to know. Yes. The best of me is yours. Mm. And tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to belong only to the two of us, isn't it? Every minute I can give. Ah, three o'clock. Time goes quickly with you around, Countess. One little glass more of champagne? No, 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 thanks. I'm over my quota now. I don't drink. Besides, I've got to think about Danny Boy. I'll bet he's still up on deck with that little girl. Do you blame him? Nope. It's very strange what you tell me. That nice man, a murderer. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. With any kind of a break, he could have... Oh, well. Would you allow him freedom, at least on the boat? You have a good heart, Burke. Right now, I got a headache and a butte. I'll be staying awake, though. It's only a few hours till Honolulu... I wouldn't put anything past him. Take care of yourself. I will. I'd like to be around for the rest of this trip, if only to see you. You are very nice, Burke. Good night, Tina. Wait. Uh, tomorrow you uh, you put this, uh, this Mr. Hardesty in the... Uh, how you say... Uh, in the brig, yeah. Why? Uh, then tomorrow is yours to spend with me. Oh, okay, sure. Ah, oh, good. You must come early. Here. You take one of these tonight. What's that? For your headache, Burke. No, I never take anything. Now you are a baby. Your head will clear, poop, like that. Well, that's very kind of you. Here, you take two. That will fix it. Thanks. You know, Tina, I'm getting fed up with this police game. So? Yeah, my dad was a cop. Yes? You see, I was kind of brought up in it. When you get around the world a bit, you find out it isn't such an elegant job. They are a necessary evil. The cops? Yeah. Yeah, but you see, people in your position in life, well, you never know. There are police around until you lose your jewels. Or something like that. You know what I mean, Tina? Kind of worlds apart, as you might say. Yes, I see. Boy, I am tired. Well, good night. Good night. Rocky. Rocky, open up. Well? Tell Dan it's okay. I gave Burke enough dope to keep him asleep all day tomorrow. Swell. Tell him he can leave the boat in the morning. And, well, tell him good luck. Is that you, Bonnie? Come in, I'm just getting dressed. Hello, Joan. Have we docked yet? Almost. Have you by any chance seen my gentleman? I've just been calling. There's no answer. I usually wait for him to call me first, and he usually does. <laughs> but this must be an unusual morning. You're in great spirits, aren't you, Joan? Why not? I love Honolulu. You're going up to the mountain? To the Pali, yes. A picnic in the clouds. Joan, did you tell Dan Hardesty that... that you were ill? What? That you've been ill for a long time, and that you should have nothing but rest and quiet and no excitement? Who told you that? Your maid. She's worried about you. May I ask what concern it is of yours? It's the concern of anyone who happens to be a human being. Don't you think it would be better to wait until I mention the subject myself? Oh, Joan, please don't be angry. I never butt in where I'm not wanted, but I am another girl. It's... it's such a beautiful day. I was trying so hard to forget. 
to put it away, not to think. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to be afraid. He mustn't know. It would change him, I know it would. I go round and round the world, always trying to forget it. It's got to come. I know it must. But not now. It couldn't now. Oh, Joan. It won't. It won't. Oh, Joan, don't cry. Look at you. I don't want other people to suffer about me. This is the first time for, oh, for ages that I haven't been resigned to it, you know. But now I want to live so much. I've got to somehow. I've got to for him. Oh, Bonnie, I love him so much and I don't know what to do. You won't say anything to him, will you? Will you promise me? Yes, I, I do promise, but you... There are no buts. No buts at all. Nothing anyone can do or say can change things as they are. Shall I mope in here and wait on a beautiful day like this with everything to live for? If it's only for a few hours, wouldn't you crowd it all in if you could? Wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, I would. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care. I'm living now, today. And I want to live every second. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Three of Till We Meet Again, starring Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien. While we're waiting, we bring you our friends, the Browning family. This summer, the Brownings have decided to go to the seashore. Dot is talking about their plans with Peggy Smith, who is spending the night. I think vacations are so much fun, don't you? Meeting new people and everything. What are you going to do this summer, Peg? Well, the family hasn't decided yet. I just as leaf stay in town. Oh, but it's so much fun going places. Oh, I hate it. I never have any fun. Anyway, I well, I read that there were more boys than girls in town in the summer, and I thought maybe I might. And this is what Peggy is thinking. <laughs> I want dates and good times. I'm sick of being left out of things. And Dot is thinking. Poor Peggy. She's so pretty. She'd be a whiz except for one fault. Maybe I can find a way to tell her later this evening. About ready for bed, Doc? In a minute, Peg. I'm luxing my undies. Goodness, at this hour? Why, of course. I like to put on fresh things in the morning. You know, honey, if they aren't fresh and free from perspiration every day, you're apt to offend people. Besides, it's so easy to keep them dainty with new quick lux flakes. It's ever so fast. Dot Browning's suggestion to Peggy is a wise one for every girl who wants lots of friends and lots of happy times this summer. Daintiness is important. And now, with new Quick Lux Flakes, it's very easy to be dainty at all times. New Quick Lux removes perspiration so quickly, yet it's so mild, so gentle, it keeps washable colors and fabrics new looking longer. It doesn't wear things out, as cake soap rubbing and soaps with harmful alkali may. Safe in water, safe in Lux, you know. Remember to lux under things after every wearing. Blouses, dresses, and sweaters, often. That generous big box of new quick lux will last you a long time. It comes in the same familiar package. You'll find it fast, wonderfully gentle and thrifty, yet it costs you no more. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Till We Meet Again. It's late the same afternoon. With Steve Burke out of the way, Dan is off the boat and ready to make his escape from Honolulu. But he's lingered for a while to spend the last sweet minutes with Joan. High on a mountaintop, shut off from the world and its troubles, Dan and Joan sit looking out across the blue sea. You know, Dan, I used to think of heaven, oh, long ago when I was a little girl. I'd think of it as a place of golden streets and fanfares of trumpets and people fluttering around like mad on wings. But then I didn't know. I didn't know that heaven is a little spot in the mountains above Honolulu. Oh, Dan, if we could stay here forever. Joan, would you be really content to spend the rest of your life with me? Yes. No matter where? Anywhere, Dan. But what's the matter? Why are you so restless suddenly? 
Joan, darling, there's something I have to tell you. Is it serious? Yes. If it's that serious, not today, please. Joan, there's something unreal about us, isn't there? How? Oh, our whole experience together. We're so close, and yet we still know so very little about each other. But I don't want to know any more than I know now. Do you? Yes, but what kind of people are we? What have we done? What do we intend to do? Well, about the past, I think I was born when you first looked at me. And about the future, if I should ever lose you, I'd die. And in between the past and the future, we have this. It won't ever end, will it, Dan? No. Whatever happens, we belong to each other always. Darling. Don't say anything, I know. But it's a second warning. Let's pretend we don't hear it. Dan, kiss me. What is this? Tears? I can't help being a little sad. It's been such a happy day. Well, I suppose we should go back, shouldn't we? Yes, I suppose so. Our dock, the Malheur's down further. I know, Joan, but you're going back to the boat alone, you see. I'm not sailing with you. Dan! Please don't ask me why, but quickly now, you'll be late. If you're not sailing, neither am I. Oh, Joan, I've left this everything to say until the last moment, and now it's too late. But we'll meet again, and I'll write to you from wherever I find myself. But where? Where are you going? I don't know, somewhere. I'm sailing on a little schooner just off here. Joan, kiss me. I'm coming with you. Yes, I know you would, but you can't. Anywhere with you, anywhere. Joan, please, you must go now. You must. I know. I've known a goodbye in all you've ever said or done. I've prayed it wasn't so, and it is. You're leaving me. If only I could have been more, meant more to you. Dan. Dan, are you afraid? Afraid? Has anyone said anything? But what? Don't lie, you know. You know, and you don't want me anymore. Oh, Dan. Dan. Joan. Joan, what's the matter? Joan. Let me through there. Will you please let me through? Dan. Dan, what are you doing here? What's the matter with her? She's fainted. Get the doctor, quick. Dan, Steve's looking for you. Get the doctor. Joan, are you all right? Dan, listen, you've still got time. You can make it. Dan. Yes, dear? Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Dan, please, come on. Where is she? Here, doctor. Miss Ames. Miss Ames. This girl's acutely ill. I'd be obliged if you'd leave. Acutely ill. She's been suffering from a chronic heart ailment. It'll only be a matter of months, perhaps weeks. You mean she... Yes. Now, please, Leif. Of course. Dan. A few weeks. Dan, you can just make it, please. Not now he don't make it. Come on, Dan. Now on, I'm chaining you to the bedpost. <laughs> Come in. Is Mr. Hardesty here? What is it? I'm sorry to disturb you, but she wants to see you. The doctor said she might just for a minute. Will you come right away? Yeah, sure, he'll come. Why? What's the matter? Haven't you seen handcuffs before? Handcuffs? Oh, what do you mean? It means that I'm an escaped prisoner. I'm being returned to San Quentin and Steve Burke is the police officer who is taking me back. Oh, well, what did you do? I should tell you, because you'll probably hear of it anyway. But she mustn't. Joan mustn't hear of it. But please, what is it? Wait, Steve. What? Take these things off, please. The truth about me would kill Joan. We all know that. You've got to help us. I want to go up and see her now. May I, Steve? Oh, my breaking days are over. Whatever my word is worth to you, will you take it? If you're going, you better go. Thanks, Steve. You're a swell guy. Hello, Joan. Hello, Dan. How do you feel, darling? Oh, it wasn't anything. I'm ashamed of myself. I wanted to come and find you myself, but that silly old doctor wouldn't hear of it. He said girls who faint should rest after. <laughs> You're a sissy. Well, you shouldn't have said goodbye to me like that. I just couldn't take it. And will you remember that, sir, in the future? Go easy on the goodbyes with little Joan. Never again. Never? Never and never and never. Oh, listen... Are they dancing upstairs? Sounds like it. May I have this dance? Shall we skip up for half an hour? Rats to the old doctor or anyone else. We're our own masters, aren't we? Yes. But 
We're going to wait until the morning. Want to do me a favor? Anything. Go to sleep and dream of me. I always do, and I think I always will. And so will I. Good night, Dan. Bless you. And bless you. And now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake... Oh, <laughs> Good evening, Berk. Hello. Well, our trip is almost over, isn't it? Yeah. We'll be in San Francisco in the morning. That's right. Berk. Have you been avoiding me? Sure I have. I don't want any part of you. You could save that French act for the suckers. Oh. Sure, I took the trouble to send a radio. Got an answer. Your record's nearly as good as Dan's. All right. Where's Dan now? He's up on deck. You've been pretty decent to him, Steve. All right, so what? Listen, I've got $30,000. The money's in New York. You can stop right there. He's going all the way back. He's no thug. When you cut it out, I want to talk about it. Just a cop at heart. Peace officer, yes. Steve. What? You're the first one of your breed that I've ever known who seemed to be human. Well, according to the history I got on you, you've been too smart to get near enough to know much about cops. <laughs> Frenchy Lonegren, what a moniker. Lonegren, your old man? Yes. What'd he do? About 14 years straight, the jute got down his lungs, and one day we'd heard he'd passed on. Pretty tough, aren't you, Liz? What'd your mom do? She's okay. I've got a little place for her in South Dakota. And what makes you think I'm so hard? You were going like steam for the Countess. Yeah, it was a swell act. But there's one thing about your not being a Countess. What? Well, there's a lot of distance between a cop and a Countess. Worlds apart. But there's, uh, I don't know, kind of a relationship between a cop and a crook. <laughs> what are you going to do after? Around 40 or 45 or so when you get old. I'll be dead. No, you won't, Liz. I've been watching you and thinking about you the last few days. And I was wondering what might happen to make you get on to yourself. You know, thieves grow old very badly. They shrivel up and fear gets them. They either fall back on drugs or booze. Oh, cut it out. All right, I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, Steve. Oh, come on now. I wouldn't hurt a hair of your pretty head. Come on, Lonegan. We're going to talk a lot someday. You've been on my mind anyway. Have I, Steve? Ah, sure, yeah. And, you know, cops grow old, too. And I was thinking, Tina, if you've got company for it, it's not so bad. Steve. Oh, Steve. Happy, darling? Very happy, Dan. It doesn't seem possible that we could ever have been strangers. Never. You know, men pretend not to need things. I've tried to pretend, you know, trying to be the lone hunter. But he's really only half of something. One half looking for the other half. Dan, there's no one like you. I could talk to you forever. Will you? What? Talk to me forever. If there's a God, I will. You know, you came out of nowhere at a time when I really doubted. I actually knew there was no such a thing as a soul. I could see no perfection in existence at all. The half looking for the other half? Yes. And I found you, didn't I? Yes, you did. Hello. Oh, hello, Steve. It's getting late, Dan. We've got a long day ahead tomorrow. I know. Joan, shall we slip down for one final drink? A goodbye one? Bar's closing. You better hurry. Come on, Joan. Francisco mean to you, Dan? A lot of things. I love San Francisco. So did I. Until now. Why now? Oh, the end of our journey. But we'll be together. Yes, we will. After a little while. Not more business like Honolulu? Yes, you see, I'm, I'm leaving immediately for Mexico City. It's uh, quite a gay place. Yes, I've heard. Could I, do you think? No, no. I've made the plans. After all, I am the man of the family. What? What plans? Tell me. Am I in them? Yes. You and I are meeting in Mexico City at the Palace Bar for New Year's. New Year's? Oh, it seems too long to wait. Well, I 
I'm not going to try to explain it all now, but you see, that's the way it must be. All right, my master. Agreed? The Palace Bar, Mexico City, New Year's Eve. You'll be with me inside here every second until then. In my heart, Dan. To us, darling. To us. Joan, are you almost ready? The gangplank's down. In a minute, Bonnie. Is Dan waiting? Well, I didn't see him. Hello. Who are you? Won't keep you a minute, Miss Ames. Have you been on board? I don't remember seeing you. I just got on. I'm from the San Francisco Plain Dealer. A reporter? What is this? Get out, please. Well, the fuss. I just want to ask a couple of questions. No. I understand from the steward, Miss Ames, that you and Dan Hardesty have been pretty good friends on this trip. Joan, don't answer him. Did you know that Hardesty is a convicted murderer? Bonnie. Get out. Get out. Bonnie, what What did he say? Well, I'm sorry, miss, but didn't you know? Oh, please. What? No, what? That Dan Hardesty is back here in the States to be hanged for murder. No, you... Joan, don't listen to him. That's not true, is it, Bonnie? It's all right, Joan. Don't excite yourself. Where's Dan? Why doesn't he come to me? He promised. Joan. Where is he? Where is he? Dan! Dan! Gang plank is down. Dan, Dan, where are you? Dan, Dan, wait. Oh, Joan, here. Oh, Dan. Oh, darling. All set, Dan? Yeah, sure. Still got a minute. Meet me over by the gang plank. I want to check my passport. Thanks, Steve. I'll be right back. Joan, don't. It's all right. I'm all right now. I just, I just wanted to see you once more. I love you, Dan. I love you, Joan. Goodbye, darling. Not goodbye. Of we the same. Until New Year's. Mexico City. New Year's. I'll be there, Joan. I'll be waiting. Of we the same. Don't forget. Never. Joan. Joan. Joan, are you all right? Joan, Dr. Cameron's here. Miss Ames, I... I saw him. I said goodbye. He's gone. He's gone. Joan. Oh, Is there anything I can do, Doctor? No. It's too late. There's nothing anyone can do now. Funny, isn't it, to be spending it here in Mexico City? If things had been different, maybe Dan and Joan would have been with us. They wanted to so much. Two cocktail for senorita, for senor. Oh, thanks. Well, here's to Dan. And here's to Joan. Senor, please, to watch the glasses. I didn't break any glasses. Neither did I. Pardon, senorita. It was over here, you see? Those two glasses, they were standing on the bar. No, they are broke. It's very strange. Steve, what... What was it? They always used to break their glasses like that. Joan and Dan. They loved each other, those two. Then and... And now. They still love Steve, I know it. A way off, somewhere. Where people who love each other always meet again. Mr. DeMille brings our stars to the microphone in just a moment. While we're waiting, Sally tells me she's been composing riddles lately. Yes, I can see one in her eye right now. What is it, Sally? Oh, something I thought of this afternoon. What housekeeping job gets done three times a day, yet is never finished? Can the housewives in our audience guess the answer? Well, suppose you tell us, Sally. <laughs> well, it's dishwashing, of course. As every housewife knows. To her sorrow, I suppose. Well, there are ways to make it pleasanter. A lot depends on the soap you use. Yes, if you care for your hands, and practically every woman does, a lot does depend on the soap. That's why millions of women stick to new quick lux for their dishes. They do it because it's so kind to their hands. It doesn't leave them with the coarse housework look 
that's so unattractive. Now, this has been proved very conclusively by recent tests of five leading soaps frequently used for dishwashing, including Lux. The tests were made under conditions similar to actual home dishwashing. Hundreds of women took part in them. Not one, not ten, not even fifty, but hundreds of women. Here's what they did. Each woman dipped one hand in Lux suds, the other in suds from another soap, for twenty minutes, three times every day, for weeks. The conditions, remember, were similar to your own dishwashing. At the end of the tests, the difference was truly amazing. Lux proved that it was milder. In case after case, the Lux hand had remained soft, smooth, and white, while the other hand was rough, red, and coarse-looking. Now, which kind of hand do you want? The soft, smooth one, of course. It's more attractive, more feminine, more lovable. So why not help yours stay that way by using new Quick Lux Flakes for your dishes. It's a good idea to get the generous large size box because it will do your dishes for a long time. And all the time, it will be caressing your hands, helping them stay soft and white and pretty. Remember that new Quick Lux comes in the same familiar Lux box. It's fast, thrifty, kind to your hands, and yet it costs you no more. Here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The lights come up and Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien return to the microphone after a great performance. Well, it's the luck of the Irish, C.B. Only two Irishmen could be that lucky. (laughs) I can't agree, gentlemen. A performance like tonight's is a matter of skill. Well, you got it wrong, C.B. Only two Irishmen could be lucky enough to have Merle Oberon in the same play with him. (laughs) I'm afraid one or both of you has been playing tag with the Blarney Stone. Well, it must be Pat. He's been coaching the Notre Dame football team these days. That's right. In the new Trockney picture. How does the team look, Pat? Oh, fine, Merle. I think we win a lot of games. As a matter of fact, if the Notre Dame team doesn't win a, in a picture called The Life of Newt Rockney, there's something wrong. <laughs> and, South, <laughs> and South Bend won't be safe for O'Brien, huh? How do they treat you back there, Pat? Oh, great, George. We shot a lot of scenes on the campus, and they put on such a welcome, I almost believed I was Rockney. Well, Pat, I'm anxious to see your team in action. Mr. DeMille, what's your play next week? Next Monday night, Merle. We're bringing one of the screen's most popular starring teams to this stage. William Powell and Myrna Loy. And our play? Our play is After the Thin Man. Bill and Myrna will play Nick and Nora Charles, the gay husband and wife they've made famous in the Thin Man pictures. As the detectives in After the Thin Man next Monday night, they do their sleuthing in the same romantic and light-hearted way that you've applauded on the screen. You've got all the ingredients of a hit there, C.B., Good night. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. I hope it won't be long until we meet again. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents William Powell and Myrna Loy in After the Thin Man. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Kathleen Fitz as Bonnie, Lou Merrill as Doctor, Wally Mayer as Rocky, and Ted Bliss, Fred Shields, Celeste Rush, Clara Blandick, James Eagles, Earl Ross, Warren Ash. Eric Snowden, and Lee Millar. This week, the people of the United States are celebrating Flag Week, culminating in the observance of Flag Day next Friday, June 14th. Now, all of you may join in the observance of this national occasion by displaying the American flag this week. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, the American Red Cross is appealing to all Americans for contributions to help the thousands of suffering women, children, and aged in war-ridden Europe. More help is needed, and now. Show your sympathy by sending a contribution to your local Red Cross chapter. The Picture Till We Meet Again was produced by Warner Brothers. This studio's newest production is All This and Heaven Too, starring Betty Davis and Charles Boyer. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. You have been listening to the Old Time Radio Hour broadcast each week over the World Wide Web. You can subscribe at no charge through Apple Podcast, Podbean, or RSS. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you can join us again next week for another hour of entertainment from the golden age of radio. Until then, this is your host, Justine Ward, saying so long for a while. <laughs>